Let me start our session with the subject of digital electronics. In this subject, today I am going to teach you the first topic introduction to digital system and binary numbers. Nowadays, so we are most familiarly are familiar with the digital system rather than your analog system. So digital systems are used in wide variety of applications or in industrial and consumer product applications such as microprocessor, digital computer, digital watches and in your signal processing. So now before we were going to move with the importance of your digital system we were moving to the analog electronics. So before I introduce your digital electronics let me have uh, a quick glance on analog electronics. So what does it mean by analog electronics? What is the purpose and what are their drawbacks? So thereafter, I'll move with an introduction to digital electronics. Now, so let me start with our session with the introduction of analog electronics. And there is an outline of your chapter one. Here we have, so in this chapter one, we are going to cover the first two topics which is digital system and binary numbers. In the next coming sessions, we are going to learn about so number based conversions, octal and hexadecimal number system, complements and sign numbers, binary codes, PCD codes, gray code and error correcting and detection codes, basic definitions, axiomatic definitions of Boolean algebra, basic theorems and properties of Boolean algebra, canonical and standard forms, digital logical gates, basic gates as well as your universal gates. Next, so analog electronics. So these analog electronics uh, uses the continuous signals to represent the information and process the information in the form of analog nature. So whatever you are giving the input to those analog electronics, analog devices are in the nature of continuous signal and you're going to after processing by that devices, you're going to get the output which is in the form of analog where it is also in the form of your continuous signal where the output, depend, uh, output variation depends on your time signal. So these systems are often used in an application where a continuous range of values are required such as in a radio or in a audio equipments so, and in your control systems too. So analog electronics can be used to amplify the signals, filter the noise signals and perform a wide variety of other functions. Some common components which are used in analog electronics includes the basic components, resistors, capacitors, inductors. Along with that, you also have some active elements which are bipolar junction transistors, field effect transistors are used for amplification. Based on the design of your analog electronics, you're going to interconnect these all the passive and active elements. We're going to design those analog electronic equipments. So now, so here output is the nature of analog signal. So your output may depend on continuous signal. So it depends on your, it varies with respect to your time. So there is a chance of accuracy is very less in your analog signals when you compare with the digital electronics. So now, so we start, so in order to obtain a high accuracy, we're going to prefer the digital electronics. So digital electronics uses the discrete signals. So though your input is an uh, analog signal, so first we need to convert that analog signal into a digital format where in that a digital format it has to only have two value function which is a zero or one. Upon converting that, so we need to process that information using digital techniques and then after processing the data, we need to transmit those data through a 
channels. So these digital systems are often preferred for their ability to store and to transmit the data with high degree of accuracy. So digital systems are made up of components which such as you're going to use the transistors, gates, flip-flops, which are used for manipulating the binary data. So these are made up of large assemblies of logical gates, often packed in an integrated circuits. Complex devices may have simple electronic representation of Boolean logical functions. So like this, the complexity is reduced by just dividing the modules into a smaller modules and those small modules are designed using your boolean logical functions so using your basic uh, gates or using your universal gates so with that we are going to reduce the complexity along with that the accuracy is also increased so we prefer the digital electronics rather than your analog electron some of the digital systems and binary numbers are given here so examples are the applications of your this system your main digital computer which is general purpose computers and these are used in many scientific applications along with that industrial and commercial application digital systems are also used in telephone switching exchanges in order to connect the users as well as so these are also used to capture your images or to capture the video motion pictures as a digital cameras so and you also use that as an electronic calculators so in a household purpose we're going to use these these in digital tvs and along with that so we are going to use these digital systems to process your data for example if we have discrete elements of information like you are processing your natural numbers as well as your alphanumerical characters and special symbols so we are going to prefer the digital systems so what is a digital system as we already discussed, digital system is an interconnected digital components or the modules, so which can give the complex outputs with the simple design techniques. So, best example of digital system is our general purpose computer. And in the general purpose, how you are constructing that general purpose computer? So it's a the computer is the one so which is interconnected um, modules so for cpu arithmetic logic unit control unit and you also have a memory unit along with the registers and you also you have your low input and output unit so these modules if you interconnect it together then it would be known as a general purpose computer so in order to design those small modules to connect uh, the large digital system so we are going to use the technique called logical design so using that logical design techniques so we are going to implement the difficult digital hardware into a smaller logical circuits and then connecting those all the, the small modules we were going to design the digital system so here so it can perform yeah, upon connecting those digital models, it can perform the arithmetic operations along with the logical operations and it also perform the complex complex functions, the solutions of your complex functions. So this is these are the needs of the digital system rather than your analog system. Let me start with the what is mean by a so as we are already discussing that digital can accept the values in the form of two value so what is a two value function and how to define that so that we are going to learn in this session as by defining that as a binary digital signal so signals in your digital systems are in the nature of binary so what is a binary digital signal so it's an information or a variable represented by the physical quantity for digital system the variable takes one discrete value or a two values or binary values or the 
relevant values. So binary values are defined with the digit zero or a one. In the words we could we could form as a symbols of a false f and true with a true true with a letter t. In the in another form of symbolization in the word symbolization it also represented as low with the letter l and high with the letter high h so in the form of your words we also define this as a on and off on and off so binary values are represented by values or ranges of values which which were the physical quantities so basic number system number system what is a number system so as a human being humans are familiar with the decimal number system so in order to represent the signals so we have to prefer some number system and basically the number system is the one so here the number system which is defined with a base and the radix so now the radix or the base of any number system is defined as how many number of unique symbols are the different digits which can occur in each position in a number system the generalized formation of a decimal point is known as the radix point in any positional number system the radix point divides the integer and fractional part in general a number in a system having the base or a radix can be written as dn dn minus 1 dn minus 2 d not dot d minus 1 minus 2 minus m so now so let we define each digit and what is the need of that digits here so dn is placed at your at your leftmost side which is having the highest positional weight and d minus m is please on the rightmost end which is having the least positional weight so the digit which is having the most positional weight or the greatest positional weight is called as the most significant digit and the digit which is having the lowest positional weight is called as a least significant digit so in a short form we will call it as a most significant digit or a least significant digit and in order to obtain actual value of your number so we need to multiply each digit with its base power so what is mean by base power so each number system is defined with a base or radix where that base or radix symbolize the number of unique symbols so now here dn is placed at r power n dn minus 1 is placed at r r power n minus 1 dn minus 2 is placed at r into r power n minus 2 the same manner d not is placed at r not d minus 1 so now a point which can differentiate your integer part and fractional part is known as the decimal point in decimal number system or in generally we will call that as a radix point so now here so to the left of your radix point you have the integer part to the right of your radix point you have your fractional part all the fractional numbers can possess the negative positional weights and all the integer part digits will possess the positive positional weights so try to remember so your positional weights on your fractional part follows your negative positional weights and your integer part positional weights will follow your positive positional weights with their corresponding bases so now we have indicated that with your digit digits as an infix so dn signifies it is at r power n dn minus 1 signifies it is at r power it is in the positional weight of r power n minus 1 so dn minus 2 is placed at r r power n minus 2 where d not 
is the one which can be placed at r power 0. Same manner, in your right hand side of your radix point, you have a fractional where the position weight is started with minus 1 and it will move till up to your minus m. So, where the position d minus 1 is placed at r power minus 1, and d minus 2 is placed at r power minus 2, d minus m placed at r power minus m. Not obtain the actual number, so we need to multiply these all the digits with their corresponding positional weight and that product of each digit with its positional weight must be added so then only we would obtain the actual value into their corresponding number system.